An emotional goodbye to your committee today. It's been 20 years and six months. Uh, how do you feel uh, coming up to this key date? Yeah, I've been a member for 20 years and six months. I'm one of the longest uh, serving UK members, but I think the heart of it has been in this committee, this extraordinary Libe committee, which is probably the most prolific legislative committee now in the House. It's on the edge of everything that is shaping the EU. Rule of law, migration, <clears throat> free movement, um, all the big issues, tech, AI, robotics, I mean, all the future issues. And I think it has been such a privilege to be part of that and to help shape it as chair, as coordinator. Um, such a close relationship between people because we've had some of the most visceral issues you know, whether it's rule of law issues in Hungary, Poland, Malta, whether it's the refugee crisis in the Mediterranean, EU-Turkey deal. I mean, all of these really tough, tough issues, but also some extraordinary issues um, on data. We had the Facebook issue. We met Mark uh, Zuckerberg and questioned him. The Eric Snowden um, revelations um, as rapporteur for, the, for that inquiry. I mean, just so many um, issues that have been incredibly uh, rich, emotional, um, but I think have, have been big issues that have helped shape this place and I think made the parliament stronger. Um, I think parliamentarians now have more clout um, and you see that, like today, when the presidency came along, got quite a tough time. Um, and the Libe Committee is known for this, but for good reason, because the members are well briefed uh, on some of the most important issues, values issues, that shape the EU today. Eleven tough months of negotiation ahead of the UK, assuming that we stick to the, 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 the limited uh, transition period. Um, where do you think justice and home affairs the, and the issues that you've dealt with will be on that agenda? Is there a danger that it's overlooked? I, I think there's more than a danger um, it's being overlooked. The problem with justice and home affairs issues in the transition period is that people are not realising that the transition period is not just about trade. Most of the justice and home affairs area has not actually been resolved. We've had very little done in the withdrawal agreement, but we've had some of the, the biggest issues of justice and home affairs completely unresolved, whether it's the European arrest warrant, what we do about extradition, whether it's civil and criminal law, whether it's the really, really urgent issue of how we have data flows going between the United Kingdom and the rest of the EU, it's called data adequacy. Now, we have to have that in law. We have to have these transfers uh, signed, sealed and delivered. And we, we only have a year of transition. But the problem is the transition period itself um, is a period in which we have to negotiate most of these things. Then we have the whole migration area, um, which again is fraught because we'll be a third country. Um, where we were already opting out of some of these things, but we will have to have a partnership with the EU. So this is a very, very tough area. And it's an area where um, there's already some mistrust is, is, is coming in. For example, we had some issues about the ECRIS database and the um, SIS database um, and the way that the UK was operating in relation to these. And so this has caused some concerns. So therefore, there's an issue of building up trust as well over this, over our membership of Europol and so on. So I think there are many, many issues here uh, which are extraordinarily dense. Um, and I think they will require, in my opinion, a lot more than that transitional one year.